Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today's video is about cleaning out the bilge and removing the prop shaft on my steel trawler and is proudly sponsored by marineengine.com. Last week we got the motor out, which means now I've got good access to the bilge. So we start this video just taking a look and cleaning all the sludge out. What do you reckon, Ed? Pretty manky. So, lots of slime, bit of oily water and coolant down the lowest point. So we'll jump in and we'll have a look. My biggest concern initially was actually this section where the salt water was just dripping down onto the metal for probably decades. So I'm gonna get my ultrasonic thickness tester and measure what's shaped the holes in here. Hopefully it's not too, too bad. You can see here, probably mostly paint, but also uh, definitely a mill or so of steel has come off here. My spanner, recovered. In this section, there's a lot of sort of oily sludge that I'm gonna have to scoop out. I'm not as worried about here because I think this, obviously this oil is gonna protect the steel a bit more. Whereas up here, it's just been raw salt water. My plan is to block up the hole in this rib here so that these two compartments are connected to each other but isolated from the section under the engine. This way I can have a bilge pump in here that just pumps clean salt water overboard and then this section here under the motor will be separate. I'll still have another bilge pump down here under the motor but really that shouldn't go off unless there's some sort of problem. On top of that at a certain point in a railing I'll mount a third float switch that'll act as a bilge alarm. I'm also going to replace these engine mounts. This one's cracked all the way through. I did that. This one's just a block of timber. This one's some sort of another synthetic material. Different bolt diameter, thinner bolt diameter here than this one. Yeah. So the plan is to upgrade all these to something that's both adjustable and has better sort of vibration absorption properties. So lots of work to do gonna redo all this wiring make it neater make it safer make it better all right step one grab a bucket start scooping this stuff up Ugh. serious turd like stuff there's obviously absolutely no way I could have cleaned and painted and blast at this bilge with the motor in place. Yeah, it's already a bucket load full of oily water and sludge so I'm actually thinking I might go I've got an empty 44 gallon drum at the workshop I might actually grab that and start filling that and see. As a bit of a quick tip while we're doing this often if I don't have one of those sort of plastic balers I'll get an old milk bottle or a juice bottle like this two litre one and just cut the base at a bit of an angle then you've got the handle here leave the lid on and they actually make really good balers what I like about them with tinnies in particular is because it's quite a soft plastic it'll sort of shape itself around the hull that you're scooping and you can get quite a lot of water out with one of these. What I'll do too is leave a tiny lip on the bottom here so you can kind of scoop in with it and not have it run out so much. So we'll go use this to get the last bit out. So. A bit of cheap effective recycling. That is nasty. It's kind of stiff enough to hold its shape but flexible enough that you can squeeze it into places you could never squeeze that commercial model the plastic one this one 
Now the bulk of the gunk scooped out, I'm just going to put some degreaser in here and give it a bit of a gurney, then we'll let that sit overnight and then I'll use the bilge pump afterwards to pump it into a container. Just splash a bit of degreaser around first. Sloshed a bit of the degreaser around everywhere. It's been sitting for a little while, then we'll gurney and then just let it sit overnight. What I've done here is just stuck the bilge pump in the sump here and then got the outlet going into a waste container. A bit more sludge left in the bottom now, so I'll use our little homemade scooper to grab that. What I've done now is make up a spray bottle of diluted sugar soap. I'm going to spray it over the whole bilge and then we're going to give it another pressure wash. After I let the sugar soap sit for a while, I gave the bilge another pressure wash. Then I pumped all the water out again and dried it as much as possible so that I can get into sandblasting it down the track. While I was waiting for it to dry, I moved on to getting the flange off the end of the prop shaft so I can remove it. And to do that, I started by just spraying it with a bit of penetrating oil. Then I put a puller on it and loaded that up with the impact gun so I had a bit of tension on it, then started to heat it. As it was cooling then, I gave it a couple of smacks with the hammer and it popped forward a fair bit. So I think we're home and hosed. I think I'll let all that cool down before I deal with it. Get a chisel, we'll get this uh, key out. Well, I'm glad that coupling came off. I needed a win today. First thing this morning, I uh, went to finish the door and the welder had died, so I drove an hour or so up the coast to drop that off at a repair guy who wasn't there. Anyway, cheers. I'm going to have a Bundy to celebrate Project Brewpig. I'm going to put the puller on the stuffing box. It's either going to pull the stuffing box out or more likely push the prop shaft out, but we want to do both, so either way it's a win. Alright, I think I might work on getting the prop shaft all the way out because I think that's going to make it freer to get the stuffing box out anyway. That wasn't hard. And we cleared the ground. The day's picking up. So you can see here, this nut's been welded around here. So we're gonna have to do some grinding here. Get that off, then pull the prop off with a puller. Well, the prop shaft doesn't look particularly gouged where it's been running on the stuffing box or anything like that. I don't know how perfect it actually needs to be, so what I'm going to do is throw this and what's left of the rudder shaft in the truck. Uh, I'll get the cutlass bearing out here, and I'll still pull the stuffing box apart now, and I'm going to head to a store in Parramatta that specialises in this stuff and get their opinion, get some new bearings, and get them to make up the rudder shaft. There's nuts here on the backs of the thread, so I'm going to wind those out and see if we can pull the stuffing box out that way. I'm going to try just moving the porter power around from side to side. When I move the porter power, it moves on these studs, so it's not seized on the studs. It looks like it's just seized in here inside the box. The good thing about this cold chisel as a spacer is I can hammer it in quite tight before I even begin using any of the rams pressure. Oh, and in case you're wondering, yes, I can see it's being deformed, but I don't care. I just want to get it off and I'll get a new one made. It's got huge flakes of rust coming off it anyway. Is 
is it a good idea to buy an old steel boat? Sure. Sure. Not actually sure this has budged a millimetre yet. I should have marked it. Although these nuts do seem to be turning now. Looked like it moved then. Ah, yes. This nut's quite loose. Uh, feels like it's really coming now. Uh, got it. This is what we're left with. This here is supposed to be the stuffing that compresses and uh, stops the leak, but it's obviously just old and hard and nasty. So we'll get that out. To give myself better access to here to clean up, I'll take these three studs out as well. To get this stud out, I'm gonna put my 19 mil spanner on the back nut and then just tighten the front nut against it. I can use the back nut to wind the stud out. An oldie bit of goodie as far as techniques go. I think I'll be replacing these studs too, they seem a bit bent. Well, as bad as it probably looks now, that's actually a sight for sore eyes. That's the best access I'm gonna to get to the, you know, the bilge here. I've got the little tool for pulling this packing out. I'll give it a go. I've got a funny feeling that's way too old and hard to get out using that particular tool, but let's give it a shot. There. Maybe I was being a bit negative Nelly. So you can see they come out as strips, which is how you buy it and how they're installed. Just winds in till you've got a bite on it and then pull on the T-piece. All right, looks like it's all out now. Just needs a clean up. Well, thanks for watching. I'm pretty pleased to be at this point now. We've pretty much disassembled everything we need to that's likely to get stuck. Now it's a case of cleaning up, getting some new parts made and putting it back together. So I feel like we've turned a bit of a corner today. I grabbed one of those cheap little sandblasters and I'm going to do the bilge myself. I'll get the outer hull done professionally, but the bilge I thought I'd just have a go doing myself, particularly given it's a confined space so I can then sort of vacuum all the dust up where the outside's a bit harder to contain. Once I've given it a sandblast, I'm going to see how thick it is, then we'll either have to do some repairs or go straight into epoxy priming it. Alright, well until then, take care and I'll catch you next week. See you.